I figure since we got a little bit of time, I thought the most valuable thing I could share with you is what I just was learning, which is the nutrient cycle. So I got, I'm going to pass this one around that way and this one around that way. But essentially what this paper is, maybe I should have kept one for myself. No worries, I'll get it back. So when we are going, sometimes in natural farming, we get all, uh, when you start, you're all about making the solutions. So making your fermented plant juice, making your OHN, making sure those things are correct. Um, and that's always, you know, the starting point. If you don't have good input solutions to start with, then any of the other farming you're going to do isn't going to work, right? If your fertilizer isn't correct, then you can't do other things. But once you've progressed and you're proficient and competent in making the solutions, now comes time to combine them and use them correctly. And so that's what tonight's topic is, is um, the prescription for following nature's cycle. So there's a natural process already happening in nature. So the same as animals, humans, and plants, we go from being babies, where we have different nutritional requirements to being when we're ready to reproduce. And then when we go into old age, we have these different stages. And the plant has those same stages and we basically break it into those three fundamentals. Um, so does everyone, did everyone get one of these? Okay, so. So on one side of this is this thing that says rice. Uh, it says nutrient cycle table for rice. <laughs> And rice is just um, any annual crop that has that's out there. Rice is just a generic annual crop that he's using. So don't think I don't grow rice. This doesn't apply to me. If you're growing an annual crop, you're, this, this chart right here applies to you. What you're going to need to do with this chart, though, is adjust the days. This chart is essentially operating, I think, on 180 days or something like that and you're going to need to extend this out. And in fact, for every crop, there should be its own little table because you will have precision into, when you know your crop really well, you will have this same chart and it's different. Every crop is pretty much different. But this is a general one to use. On the other side, the side with all the Korean writing, is a document that, um, still in the process of translating um, but you can kind of read it and you're perhaps familiar with this already this is our nutrient cycle and so it starts um, with soil on the far left goes through its seed its body its flower it's maturing and then on the far right is ripening so these are the three or the, the these are the formulas you'd use during these growth stages. So what we what we got to do this last class was kind of tune into this right at the end. Um, and I think before I start getting explaining this chart a little bit more, I think it's worthwhile me reading to you a few of the notes the patterns in them in those leaf shapes and this helps you then to correct what you're doing this is the way to really start to recognize your plants of what's going on because the first leaf on the very left side is what we would put into our body so when you go to this this chart here and you see the one that's under body which is type 2 When you're seeing a whole bunch of leaves like that, 
your plant is in type 2 phase. So that means it's wanting to grow its body. It's wanting to replicate really fast. It's wanting to do it, it like fast, quick growth. So after fruiting, it'll flush. Your leaves will look like that. The middle one is your changeover. I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense I put them in that order. Um, so your middle one is your changeover. When your leaves are starting to look like that, your plant is starting to enter its reproductive phase. And the third one, the nice round leaf, is when your plant is then going to, is reproduction. So that's like when your fruits are maturing on your tree, you'll notice it predominantly looks like that type of leaf. So you can actually look at your plant's leaves, and if your plant is supposed to be reproducing, but it has the other two, you can tell kind of what is wrong with it. Like, okay, my plant was supposed to put out fruit, it was supposed to have nice round leaves to fruit, but I over applied nitrogen and I pushed it into um, rapid growth and now my leaves look like all the leaves on the, the long round one, or you know, the long ones, not just the round ones. You can, you'll know to tune into your plant to see what's happened between there. So looking at your plant leaves to, to understand how to then use this chart. So that, that was based on my notes of what I learned there. Um, and, um, but I think what is, let's, let's take a look at this chart here, the rice one, and see. So essentially what's happening in Korea is on either side, they're going into a dormant phase. So this first column up here at the top is dormant. And for a tree, that would be like winter in Korea. We don't really have that dormant phase here. Although your plant will somewhat go through that dormancy even without the um, seasonal change here. Um, so starting out dormant, and then the first, call, first row going across is vegetative growth. So what's happening in vegetative growth is it's consumptive growth, meaning the plant is using stored nutrients either in the plant or somewhere else to then grow new leaves. So the plant is consuming itself. In the first time you plant a, a seed, it's actually using part of the seed and stored energy in the seed to do that first consumptive growth. So its first growth stage is actually via the blessings of nature. It's in the seed already, so it's there. Anytime later that your plant goes into consumptive growth, it's actually using part of the plant, which in um, plant terminology, that would be, a, um, it would be a sink type of growth. There's sinks or sources, and it would be using. So it's actually, it's a sink. Um, the next one over is the crossover period. This is when the plant is storing its nutrients, preserving nutrients. So right when you're... Um, plant is going to crossover stage it's, it's, it's actually accumulating nutrients right then so it's not using them to go it's kind of like accumulating them getting them ready and then the third the third one over there reproductive growth comes into maturity it takes those stored nutrients and it just transports them into its fruit so that's the reproductive so Energy is being used in the be in the first growth stage. It's being stored in the middle reproductive stage, and then it's being transferred to your fruit in the reproductive stage. Here, coming across. Um, the next little thing coming down the next part of this table um, is talking about how many leaves typically for each thing happening. So this is the way he was, he was teaching us is to, this is why each plant has to have its own um, table because, you know, five leaves on, on my durian tree isn't the same as five leaves on my rice plant, right? But understanding these 
amount of leaves that it's going to put out. It's going to put out five to six leaves in that early growth stage before the plant starts to kind of move into its reproductive or its, its crossover period. So all across there, you can kind of see how these leaves come into um, the, the next stage is between 10 and 11, and then it leaves it at 15 leaves, the crossover period. So every plant, you can count leaves and flushes that are coming out, like a collo plant. For, or someone was telling me a banana plant puts out something like 35 leaves in its lifetime. And that if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't grow that high by the 35th leaf, it's going to throw a rat, fruit rack or die at that time. <laughs> But there's every plant you'll notice there's a set number of leaves that are going to start to emerge. And with natural farming, what you can do is you can make those leaves bigger so your plant's more robust, but you can't change how many leaves it's going to put out particularly. Um, and this next little part under here where it says sport and seedling and growing, I need more clarity on this one. You can, you can look at it and see what you can reverse engineer and figure out, but even the language, it, it's, it needs some massaging into like, doesn't really make sense to me. <laughs> um, Did you see this like a six-month sprout instead of six four? Months of yeah, probably a sprout, who knows? But what, what does middle stage mean to you? It doesn't mean anything to me, right? So kind of figuring out what these things are. The next column makes a lot more sense to me because anytime we got stuck at the advanced training with some concept, we got stuck. Master Cho's like, okay, let me go back to the example of the human. If we couldn't understand what was happening with, with the plants, you would go back to the example of the human. So this row here where it, it compares it to a human. And all of a sudden he says, well, it's an infant. And you're like, okay, automatically we know how to take care of human infants, right? And so when he brought these analogies back to things we understand, this really helped me to make a whole lot more sense of what's happening. Um, and then because in Korea they're sowing on a certain date, he actually mapped this to a calendar in the next um, next row. So when you get really good with your crop, you should know already on a calendar date that it's, it's going to enter this stage. And it's almost always fairly consistent. You know, it's based a little bit on weather, but it's fairly consistent. The reason for this calendar date to be put down here is that it's one week before, I believe, or one to two weeks before. I think it's one week before. You actually start preceding the treatment for the next stage. So if I know in one week my plant is going to enter its crossover period, one week before I start applying the crossover treatment. And you kind of pre-seed your plant into going to the next stage. So, I don't, so one week before, use the next one. Um, and then this right below that where it says day and month, the, the Roman numerals are the same Roman numerals you will find on the back here, except for I don't think I wrote Roman numerals in there. But these are the types of things you're using. So the number four is your seed treatment solution. The number two is your body. Number three. Changeover is the 2-3, huh? Yeah, 2-3, yeah. That's the changeover. Yep, so the 2-3 is the changeover, and the 3 by itself is the reproductive. Yeah. So that helps you to correspond this chart here to this prescription on the back. So if I know my plant's in this phase, it's needing these nutrients, this is the prescription that's given. Um, so again, this the next one is growth type, and it kind of it's it's similar to what I was talking about the consumptive, the preservative, and storing the nutrients. It's doing those same three things again. 
Um, and then this, the next column, nutrients needed, or the, the next row, is gives you an idea of how to relate this to other um, NPK um, academic research and knowledge. We're still going the same nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and calcium. Those are the four major components of the plant. And essentially those recipes he's prescribing fit this role, matching your NPK. And there's high, low, and mid for those. Um, yeah, and then the last, the last row is um, talking about the number of leaves. So basically, you can course correlate all these together. Um, and it looks like the rice does not even go into the reproductive period, really. But I could be wrong. I will get more on, more in detail on this and um, hopefully learn a bit more about this. So flipping it back to the Korean side, um, the you may have seen a simpler chart than this. This one he just gave to us at the advanced training. And the, the thing I wanted to touch on this is that um, if you look at type 2, he's actually including um, CalFOS, WCP, and fish amino acid at the same time. Whereas before, we kind of said they're mutually exclusive. In this case, where it's more of an advanced formula, it's, um, they're both included. And then when you look at the flowering stage next, there is CalFOS and water-soluble calcium, both. And then the type 3 as well, there are both CalFOS and calcium. And I've really seen... What I was noticing is Master Cho, every time he uses calcium, he's also using calcium phosphate. So, so both are going in. Do you know what the yeast is under type 2? And the second from the bottom of the lab, you've got yeast. What is that? Yeast is yeast. It's a natural farming solution. So this is an advanced for formula that you're getting here. So if you haven't heard some of this before and you're like, what is yeast or what is maltose or what is this other stuff? It's because that there are much more complex things that are, um, like basically, you know, we're going to get you a square block, but this is getting you a finely polished ashlar that's going to be nice. So getting too into the... If you don't know what yeast is, omit it. You're good. I think it was a translation issue with the maltose is actually loud. Yeah. No, 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 not on all of them. The two that are crossed out are not. The maltose is actually maltose in the seed one. There's a maltose on the seed, seeding solution. No, nope. they're all crossed out, it's just correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think the So I think the interesting thing to note here too is that um, the FAA and the calciums are kind of on either side of a teeter-totter. And so if one side is high, the other side is low. And if one side is low, the other side is high in terms of the calcium and the fish amino acid that are used here in this recipe. So if you notice, he is including fish amino acid even into um, maturing. But it's at half, or it's at 1 to 2,000. So it's a very, very, very light dilution of it. And so in this here, um, yeah, like keep that in mind. So if, if you're putting a, a bunch of fish amino acid, you'd have less calcium. 
putting a bunch of calcium, you'd have less fish amino acid, and that's going to then get your leaves to look like one of those either side. And they're kind of balanced through the triangle in the middle. So, so who took level two that we gave you this formula? That's a general formula. And then this is advanced class formula. So, but they remember that uh, when they're fruiting cycle, you have, if you want to use uh, FAA, it's very little. Otherwise, flower and the fruit all stop. So that's why you as a one to two thousand, yeah, on a type three over here, if you're going to use it. And that's why when you first get introduced to it, we just basically om omit it because it's easier to omit it than to... I, how many people when they first st started natural farming like, got like heavy-handed and was like, oh, it calls for 1 to 500, I'll just put 1 to 25. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, we've all done it, right? <laughs> um, and that's why we just omit it completely because, you know, Better not to know than yeah. to make a, a mistake that way. Mm -hmm. um, Could you give an understanding of this leaf thing with like compound leaves, like with papaya and not just single leaf plants? Because I got really confused about that. That's something Tomatoes. you know you'd have to like. I think you'd have to be a they, to know it. They they do exhibit similar um, um, things like. They, they do. I, I just, I mean, I haven't tuned my eye into seeing well, it. I guess I'm asking if you have any clue about, are we looking at the shape of the compound leaf itself or each individual piece as far as the shape of <coughs> a papaya leaf, for instance? I've been, no, I've been noticing that, actually, since we have given the assignment and citrus is the easiest to play. Right. Because it, it's the same compound leaf, but in it, some of them are short and fat. Yeah. So and and also also he drew I, I didn't I didn't put it up on the board but the, the second diagram that was drawn actually showed all three of those leaves on the same branch. And if you start to look at your plant, you'll notice all three of those leaves are on the same branch. Um, but you're really basically, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain you're looking at the outer, the, the growing tip to know which stage your plant is in. If your growing tips are round, then you know, okay, it's, it's reproducing. If your growing tips are sharp like that. So, so if you want to go see it at home, go, go, go look at your citrus tree and go look and try to spot all three of those leaves on each one and then see which ones are predominant on the tip and look at what your plant is doing. Is it flowering? Is it reproducing? Is it just put out a new flush growing? Um, and I think you'll see this pretty clearly. Um, and so, so basically these the, the type 2, the changeover, and the type 3 are everything. We're pretty much familiar with those three things. And then um, the last one on this side is our um, enhanced ripening solution. And the enhanced ripening solution is a little bit more complex in terms of how the seawater is applied. Down at the bottom, you see it says, 10 to 15 days before harvest, and then it says 100 liters of water and 3.3 liters of seawater, which gets you a 1 to 30. Then there's a 1 to 25, and then there's a 1 to 20. And basically what you're doing is you're working back from the time you're going to harvest, and each week preceding that, you're going to apply the seawater treatment that way. So right before I'm going to harvest it, I'm going to apply seawater at 1 to 20, and that will really sweeten your produce. Yeah, Master Chill was talking about the sugar cane that they spray with Roundup to increase the sugar content right before they harvest. Um, but it, he said if they instead use seawater, 
they would give in more sweetness and not coat your sugar in poison. <laughs> but, um, I should use less um, definitive words. Coat your, your sugar in herbicide. That's a better one. Poison's debatable. But, well, herbicides for sure, right? Some people love stuff like that. You should go on the internet sometime. Trust me. <laughs> um, but the general idea is is this. So, so to enhance ripening, um, kind of just getting your last minerals into your plant. You're not worried too much about nutrition for the plant to grow itself. Just really focused on getting minerals in there. And that makes then when you go to um, do analysis of your fruit, it has higher nutritional content than other farming. And this, I think, is what is going to help us as natural farmers set ourselves apart is that you can actually measure tissue sample like of your banana and see it had more minerals in it and if you're following this prescription you're putting all the minerals in you can be off the charts can we all say hi oh. Oh. um and the other, the other interesting thing to note, I think, here is that is the FPJs are changing across the way. The initially, you're starting with uh, the soil treatment has FPJ of mugwort. Then you have FPJ of wormwood, which also was, what else does that say, Kim? It's a mugwort. Okay, so 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 I was told warm wormwood is another word for mugwort, is what someone told me. So when I was just translating this with Google Translate, it told me wormwood, which actually is. That's I don't know. So. I think Yeah, wormwood is definitely a different plant than mugwort, but I don't know about the Korean. Yeah, it, it says mugwort. It says mugwort. Yeah. Okay, so some. So no, no, no. If it's not a mugwort, it's not a mugwort, then cross out. Yeah, so maybe replace that wormwood with mugwort. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant to write down. Um, but then you, in the body, you're using dropwort, mugwort, because those heal the body again they help with that exfoliation they help with that whole um, nutrient uptake but then when you get into the flowering stage he's making an fpj from acacia flower and um there are some analogs to that here i'm not exactly sure of what i, I don't have it on the top of my head i think i took notes on it at one point um but you can you're also using the um, baby fruits. yeah the baby fruits the, so the unmatured fruits mm -hmm. uh, in that stage. Um, also, it says, also, it says a question part of it that means uh, fruit, fruiting, fermented fruit juice during the flower. Yeah, flowering. Too. Okay. That's a new. So fermented fruit juice as well during the flowering stage is what that says. So much it translates for me. Uh, and then the last one is the maturing, which actually I gotta update my stuff on this because if you look at how little bit of fermented fruit juice he's supplying in the maturing stage, um, one to two thousand, one to three thousand, it's it's very little bit because at that stage your plant should have already accumulated and move the nutrients. It shouldn't be trying to absorb new nutrients and put it into its fruit. It's just a little like like the snack they give you on the airplane. <laughs> we love you, Drake. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We do. Um, so, so all these components are in there, but the ratios when you get to this more advanced chart are a bit more precise. Um, and then um, one, of, one of my favorite parts was when someone who didn't put their name tag over their mouth was asking um, about, um, oh shoot, I just lost my train of thought. That was too funny of a joke. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
Oh, hey, what was I going to say? Um, oh, man. Okay, I'm tired. <laughs> um, yeah, so any, any questions on this that we got here? Oh, oh the, the, the part I was going to get to the last little bit was that um, Master Cho was talking about, you know, you know when a chef makes a recipe, like they don't necessarily go measure two cups of something and put it in. Like the first time they're making the recipe, they just make it because, because they're an experienced chef. They make it, you know, the way they know it's going to taste good and then they'll go reverse engineer it to write out a recipe for people to copy. Um, very similar here, Master Cho was, when we started to ask very minute details on it, he's like, he kept going back to like, look, the, the farm is your university, you know, you got to tune in and study this. And really, it's like, a, um, he was talking about a, a chef just like putting, you know, pinches of this and pinches of that in when you really get a good handle on things. And that's what makes you the superior chef. This is, so... The first nutrient cycle you probably got was was like basic, easy. You know, um, this one here is a little bit more advanced. And then when you get up to Master Cho's level, he's actually making prescriptions based on his observations, and now like you know using very precise bits of it. Um, so, um, I think that's all I have. Did you the very bottom on the right hand side says uh, FPJ from Purslane. What did Master Joe say about that? Yep. So so when that when that when that notice down there the three the three weeks before harvest, if you apply FPJ from Purslane, your fruit will come out with really nice skin. Like really shiny, really, really beautiful skin on your fruit. So that's that's why that note is there. It's kind of in a weird place. Any other question? I just wanted to thank you for all you do and ending room with all the natural flowing because it makes sense now that you summarized it in a very basic way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, cool. Cool. Thank you. All right, cool. Outside. Outside. The one in the greenhouse, they're two feet long. Yeah. That was her kimchi, cucumber kimchi was from one cucumber. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>